welcome to contemporary worship, casual worship, modern worship, however we want to tag this service. We are here at the Oscoda United Methodist Church, and we welcome you who are worshiping at home and invite you to give us a, a like, a thumbs up on Facebook and YouTube, and let us know that you were here, and let us know if you have feedback about our service. We are always grateful to know how you've connected and where you are connecting from, and it's been interesting to see that we have some people who connect from from far away. So a lot of our snowbirds tune in from Florida, and uh, we have some friends in Wisconsin who watch our services too, so um, just, uh, you know, from, from around, okay? Um, as far as our announcements go this week, we have uh, the, the uh, Methodism study is on Tuesday, and that's if you are interested in learning more about the, the um, I'll, let me put that one on hold. I want to talk about this first. Okay, um, I'd like to this year offer a Lenten devotional book, and so this will be a, a book of devotions written by the congregation, and I started talking about this, oh, you know, a good four or five weeks ago, and four or five is about the number of people who have submitted something to me, so um, I, I'd really like to get a collection of your prayers, your devotional thoughts that we can put together in a booklet, so we have our 40 days of prayer during Lent, and I need to get get those by Friday because Lent's starting in just a couple of weeks, so we, I want to be have some time to put that booklet together so we have it to get printed and have it out to you at Ash Wednesday time, okay? So if you can get those to me by Friday, it can come by written on a napkin, on uh, email, on, uh, you know, ever, however you want to bring it. Um, if you want to dictate it to me over the phone, I can type it in, so, okay? Just, um, but... Offer me some thoughts, okay? I know you all have them, right? right? Right, you all have them, right? Yeah, okay, you all have some thoughts about the Lord, right? Okay, so, okay, all right, let's see what's next. Um, we, we do have Loaves and Fishes Monday and Thursday, as usual. We've got a couple of meetings, trustees, tomorrow, or uh, Monday night at 6, Bill, okay? Six o'clock, we're going to be going over the building use policy. Um, finance follows at 7.30. Then uh, 7 on Tuesday is that Methodism class. This is what I started to talk about. Was the, it's a, a group for uh, to learn more about what the Methodist faith means. And as, it's especially if you're not a member and want to become a member so that you have a little bit of grounding in what the Methodist faith is, but it, it, membership is not, you, you know, it's not the outcome of that. It, what the outcome is understanding more about what we believe in the Methodist church. Um, there is a sign-up sheet out on the, in the lobby area on the long table by the out, exterior door. There's also a sign-up for the chosen video study on Thursday. We, we gather every other Thursday to watch an episode of the chosen, and then we have a uh, we have soup, we have a or light supper, and then we have this discussion about the video, and it's just been very interesting. We just got started, so you're not far behind. So um, come and join us on Thursday for the chosen. But let us know if you're coming, so we have enough meal, uh, you know, food for you. Okay. Let's see. I think that's everything, right? Anybody else got a? a uh, no other announcements. Then let's let's have our greeting of the collective. God is good. All the time. All the time. And let's center our thoughts. Lord, I am grateful for your many blessings. I am thankful that you give me reasons to grow. And let's pray. Loving Lord, we thank you truly for the many blessings you shower upon us. And we know, Lord, that you also give us a, a, a listing of cautions of things that we need to be wary of. And we want to explore that in ourselves and, and in the word. And so, God, thank you for bringing us to worship today. Thank you for folding us into your love. And thank you for breathing on us the breath of life. Loving God, we, in these moments, in these times, we celebrate and praise you. And we lift all glory to you, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite the band.
we stand for our first song? <clears throat>
Amen. Thank you for all that great music. I didn't know that last one. It was new to me, so it's always good to have new music in your soul, right? Uh, we have several prayer requests this week. Dorothy Wells, um, she fell and she broke a bone in her hip, but they were able to repair that with just a few screws and she is back home and is uh, recovering there. They did not have a space in the rehab facility, so she needed to, to go home. And I think her sister is trying to come up to be with her, but right now we've got um, church members who are taking turns staying with her, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, Gary Rayberg um, has, not, has not done as well after post-surgery as we had hoped, but so we need to continue to pray for, for Gary. We have a prayer request from Mike, Mike Van Sumeren. Um, this is Lori's cousin, Lori Walker's cousin. And he's um, in ICU on a ventilator, although don't know if it's COVID or not. But th that entire the family has had a number of situations in the last several weeks, and it's been very difficult. So um, a, a death, some additional sicknesses, illnesses, um, just... Please keep Mike and his family, and, and Lori especially, too, in, in your prayers. Who's got anything else to share? We are silent tonight. So, you know, I do want to have us really pray about the church and our worship services. Uh, we, we have a, f a few people in worship tonight, but there's, and, and it, you never know from week to week, especially with this particular service last week, we had, you know, 28, 30, something like that. I don't know, it was a lot. And, and this week we, we have fewer, but the people who are, when we are gathered as the disciples of Christ right now, I think that it's, it's always good to be together. But we have the, the obligation and the, and the commitment to share the word with others and to invite others to participate with us. So I pray that we will do that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. God of grace, God of glory, Holy Spirit, come to us. Fill us with the, the hope that you bring. Fill us with love for each other. Fill us with an awareness of all that is around us and those who are near us who need our help, who need to hear your word of hope. Use us, Lord, to reach those who need to hear that word. Put those words right in our mouth and then give us a shove to say, speak it now. God, this church is such a magnificent place. It's a, it's a building, yes, but it's such a magnificent collection of, of believers. People gathered together to worship you. And whether we are gathered online and are watching or we are gathered here in the house, we, we praise you, Lord. We lift, our, we lift our souls to you, our thanksgiving and our gratitude. 
We are so grateful that Dorothy's fall was, was no worse. That she was able to get to the hospital and able to have surgery. And that she is able to recover. Thank you, God, for blessing that whole situation and for, for your healing in my elbow. It continues to do better. Thank you for your healing touch on all of us. We lift to you, Gary. We lift, we lift his situation. We lift all of those who are in some kind of need. And Lord, if there is a need that we can fulfill, please show it to us. Give us the means. Give us the direction to do that. We want to remember Lori's cousin, Mike. Lord, we ask for your healing in his life, for, for your healing presence to fill him right now. Whatever this is that is causing him to be in the hospital and on a ventilator, Lord, that you would clear it from his body. God, so many requests, so many requests in our hearts, and we lift them to you. And we give you so much praise. We give you all the praise that our bodies can muster. And we, we lift it all up to you in the name of Christ who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So last week we talked about with the kids about who they follow. Remember we had the duck that had the 75 ducklings. That was such a great story. But, but today what I really want us to, to help kids understand is that, that the it's not just who they follow, but who they hang around with. Um, the, who do they make friends with? And quite often, kids and, and us as adults, we make friends with people who are like us, who, are, who look like us, who, who come from similar backgrounds to us. And that's not what Jesus is asking us to do. That's not the, the Christian way. The Christian way is for us to reach everybody, to, to see everybody as a unique child of God. And it doesn't matter how many sins they come in with. It does not matter what they smell like. It doesn't matter what kind of clothes they wear. They are, every person is as loved by God as you are. But our kids don't see that. We need to model that for our kids and teach that to our kids so that when kids go to school, they don't become the bully. <laughs> they don't shut somebody out because they are different, but they welcome them in because they are different. Say, so you've got something interesting about you. I want to learn what that is. And let, let, let me hear your story. There's a great commercial... Uh, this is so random that it just came to me. But this, it, it's a, a mother putting a boy on the bus. Then he's carrying a, a white cane. I mean, he's obviously visually impaired. And he goes through the bus and he tries to find a place to sit down. And when he sits down, then it's for Colgate. It's for toothpaste. But he smiles and his teeth are so bright. And the, and the little girl sitting next to him says, hi, are you new here? You know, it's like, okay, Colgate is not going to break down the barriers, okay? But it's a great example of how kids can be and, and should be. So I really pray that we will, we will intentionally pray about our kids being aware and open to everyone because that is what the Lord teaches us to do. Amen? Amen. All right. So I think the man has a song.
So we are staying in Luke again, and this is a little bit after some of the first disciples have been called, and um, Jesus is in, uh, in, this is the beginning of, the, this is Luke's presentation of the Beatitudes, and you probably are more familiar or, or like better the ones that come in Matthew, but this is Luke's version of the Beatitudes. He came down with them and stood on a level place. And with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all over Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And all those who were, those who were troubled with unknown or unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him for the power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what the ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what the ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to tell you something about pastors. Pastors all like to preach the good news. We like to share good stories and good ideas about living. Jesus gives us a lot of good messages. Jesus gives us a lot of great teachings. Teach us how to live. We can preach those all day long. But not every word from Christ comes with an easy message or an easy, it doesn't all sit easy with us. And it's especially challenging for those of us who live in the land of plenty and who have not experienced extreme poverty or need. But we can't preach about Jesus and skip over the Sermon on the Mount or the Sermon on the Plain, depending on what you want to call it, because these words are so key to the gospel of Jesus. This message that's recorded in Luke, this message on the plain, it has a lot of commonality and overlap with Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. And no doubt, Jesus preached these ideas many times. These spiritual concepts are actually the basis of the the tenets of all of Jesus' message. Our founder, John Wesley, was in ministry for 65 years, and yet we only have 60 different sermons from him. Of course, Jesus would have shared these ideas many times as he traveled from town to town and taught his followers. So it's not a surprise then that Matthew and Luke record similar ideas differently. 
because Jesus didn't have a computer where he could just print out the, a copy of the best version of this message. He would have shared the message in the oral tradition and likely in, taught it in the same way at every stop, but with different emphasis and maybe some different words. Preachers do make changes depending on who's in the audience, okay? The differences give us a broader picture of what is under, underlying the meaning of what Jesus is conveying. Matthew's version is certainly more positive in tone with nine blessings. We can all relate to Matthew's lovely version because Matthew looks at spirit rather than pocketbook. And that is kind of interesting given that Matthew was the tax collector. On the other hand... Luke gives us four blessings and four woes. And we read this and we secretly wish Luke would have just stopped writing after the first four verses. Luke highlights human conditions and the things of the world over spiritual awareness. But let's start with this situation. Jesus was getting to be pretty popular. The crowd came to hear him and to be healed and cleansed of, of spirits, cleansed of infirmities. The text said a great crowd of disciples. And so in this case, the disciples being referenced are more than just those close followers, those close 12. And the, and the text says a great multitude of people came from all over Judea. Maybe they were first time listeners. Maybe they'd heard about this guy, Jesus, and they came to satisfy their curiosity to see what everybody was talking about. Jesus begins with, for, or with four blessings, and they resonate with his previously stated mission to bring good news to the poor, right? Nourishment offered to the hungry, lifting up those who have been marginalized by the larger world, and either economically or socially. Those two marginalizing factors, marginalizing factors really work together, though, don't they? they? If you lose your economic status, that inevitably leads to a loss of social status. And if you are ostracized in, in, in uh, society, you lose your position. That's often the first step into poverty. But the poor Jesus is addressing would have included also those close disciples, Peter and James and John, those who left everything to follow Jesus because they were monetarily poor too. We get a number of calls every week at the church. We get calls from people who are in need. We hear from a lot of people, and, and really most of them are women, people who need help with rent and utilities, food, transportation, gas. Our criteria for helping people is rather flexible. We do have a number of people who benefit from our new free food pantry. That's been a wonderful ministry, so I'm really glad that we have so much support for that. Now, for larger needs, we coordinate with groups like NEMSCA, the Northeast Michigan Community Service Agency. We coordinate with FISH, the Friends Immediately Sharing Help, and we coordinate with Salvation Army. We just don't have a lot of money in what we call our Good Sam account. We limit those that we help to one time a year because People, if, if people who are in need could continue to ask and ask. There are a lot of people in Oscoda living on the fringes, probably more than you realize. And the stories they share are always complicated and involve a number of people and decisions and events. And as they tell their stories, the one thing that they have in common is that they feel they need to explain why they are in the situation. And they have a desire for us to know that they are not bad people. The outcome is always the same, though. They find themselves in a place of deep need. And they're anxious. They're looking at a pile of debt that doesn't seem like it will ever end. In some cases, the upheaval in their life is the first time that they've had to ask for help. And so they're not even sure how to navigate the resources that are available to them. They don't know where to turn. And sometimes that's the best place that we can, is to help guide them into what's available for them. 
They're not sure how to ask for help. Others stand in the constant shadow of need. And, and the crisis that they have, it's, it, they don't even know how to manage their life. And others live compounded by physical and mental health needs. It's these people who Jesus says receive the kingdom of God. And yet they're living in tents in the woods or on the couch of a friend or at the homeless shelter if there's a place for them and if they haven't used up all their time that they're allowed to stay there. Do we have a hard time seeing how this life is a blessing? These people call seeking help for one thing, but their needs are so much more. And yet it's the one thing that's going to help them get from today to tomorrow that they're thinking of. And yet when the people are in their depths, they're often resilient with their faith in God. They believe that tomorrow will indeed come. Maybe because faith is the only thing they can have that doesn't cost them anything. Jesus blessed those who were poor in their own resources and who learned to rely on God. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Jesus blessed those who are hungry now because they will be satisfied in their faithfulness and devotion to the Lord. In Christ, life has meaning now. Those who weep are blessed because they will laugh in the age to come. And for the present, they are blessed because they trust in God's goodness. And Jesus also blessed those who are hated because of him. Anyone who is rejected for Christ's sake is accepted by God. Jesus calls us to see the possibility of a world, world where the poor have all that they need, that the hungry are filled, the grieving are laughing, and the gospel is heard with joy. That's really what Jesus is asking of us. To see a vision where the world is reshaped, expanded, and deepened beyond where we can imagine. To have empathy for those who are ostracized and left in need, whose circumstances are much harder than our own. To give money or time or food or clothes. Those are all acts which Christ wants us to pursue. But most of all, Christ wants us to see each other. To really see those who are identified in the passage as receiving the blessings. It's also good for us to remember that Luke was written in 85 AD. Because a lot of things had happened and changed in society at that time. After the destruction of the Jerusalem temple in 70 AD, Jews and Christians really separated. Families split and Jews openly rejected those who identified Jesus as Messiah. The Jews identified these early Christians as evil. Division erupted be among God's people. And political division, spiritual and theological division, ethnic division, and of course economic division. It's this division that Christ wants us to understand. Jesus calls us to confront the real issue which we face as people of prosperity. We have a delusion that we can depend on ourselves. When we have the comforts of this world, we're in good shape. And yeah, I believe that we have become complacent about our place in the world. Because we have a secure home to live in and food to eat. And we don't need to worry about medical care or education for our children. We become content with life that, that we have created, and we close our eyes to the needs of the world. We rely on our paycheck and our pension and our privilege, and our faith is there. Faith in the things of the world is the opposite of the joy we receive when we place our faith in God. So woe to us. Let's talk about those woes. Hmm. When you hear that word and you read that word, how do you receive that message? We probably think of it as the opposite of blessing. And the first word that comes to mind is probably cursed. Now I submit to you that woe is not a curse. It's not a threat, although we seem to read it that way. Woe to you who have money and food and joy and reputation. 
Woe means sorrow and sadness. And not because you have those things, but sadness because you trust in the world rather than trusting in God. Christ reminds us even in the blessings of this sermon that those who profit from the world's abundance and who are trying to be Jesus' disciples have a responsibility to the poor. Those who are rich now have been paid in full. They have nothing to look forward to when they do not depend on God. The well-fed will go hungry in the age to come. If they have no compassion, they will be shown none later. Do you see? Those who laugh now in carefree, shallow merriment will weep in the age to come if they care nothing about the joy of others, but only about their own amusement. And those who are popular and have a good image by the world's standards will be shunned and rejected if they seek their own glory rather than the glory of God. It's our choices that determine our outcome, right? John Wesley wrote a lot of messages about the Beatitudes, although he mainly focused on the text of Matthew. But he said this in the explanatory notes of the, this Luke text. Generally, prosperity is a sweet poison and affliction a healing, though bitter medicine. Let the thought reconcile us to adversity and awaken our caution when the world smiles upon us. Hmm. Prosperity is a sweet poison. That's a, that's a vibrant description. Poison kills us. But sweet poison tastes delicious even as it is killing us. Having plenty in this world can sour our souls to the true message of Christ. Having plenty separates us from those who have little. Just as the Jews and Christians separated for socioeconomic reasons, so do we. We don't typically spend time with people who are dissimilar from us. Wesley said, affliction is a healing, though bitter, medicine. All of us really learn the most challenging lessons of life through the, our times of adversity. Those are the ones we remember. Challenge is our teacher. And while we may not know poverty and pain in the extreme, as Christians, we have an obligation to connect with what God says for the poor. We cannot close our hearts to the poor and outcast and in the same breath say that we faithfully worship a Savior who teaches blessings to the poor and admonitions to the privileged. I think Jesus is truly reminding us to see God in all people. All the people who are left behind, left out and left alone. After all, Jesus does some of his best work through the people who the world considers to be leftovers. I know this from personal experience, and who knows? Those who the world rejects, you know, maybe one day they'll end up being your pastor. Huh. Amen. I think the band is going to have us sing another song for us. Please stand for our last song.
Amen. So good to have you here and so good to have all that great music. Thank you for all the work you put into that. that praise the Lord. Let's join our, in our statement of our faith in action. I go in joy, for I am blessed by God. I go to bring blessings and to be blessings. And I pray that as we go in peace, that we will see all of God's people, that we will look for God in everyone and welcome all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.